Today's lesson is on space figures and cross sections. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. A polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure whose surfaces are polygons. This polyhedron is a rectangular prism. Each polygon is a face of the polyhedron. An edge is a segment that is formed by the intersection of two faces. A vertex is a point where three or more edges intersect. We can analyze a three-dimensional figure by using the relationships among its vertices, edges, and faces. Here are the five platonic solids. In example one, we will identify vertices, edges, and faces. How many vertices, edges, and faces are in the polyhedron? List them. Let's start with the vertices. Since the base is a square, it has four vertices and one vertex at the top where the triangular faces meet. So there are five vertices. The five vertices are point D, point E, point F, point G, and point H. The edges are the sides of the square base, so there are four of those, plus the four segments that connect the triangular faces to the vertex H. So there are eight edges. The first is segment DE, then segment EF, segment FG, segment GD, segment DH, segment EH, segment FH, and segment GH. There are five faces, the square bottom and the four triangular faces. Let's start with the base, quadrilateral DEFG, and now the triangular faces, triangle DEH, triangle EFH, triangle FGH, and triangle GDH. Pause the video and do you try number one. How many vertices, edges, and faces are in the polyhedron? List them. Let's start with the six vertices. Point R, point S, point T, point U, point V, and point W. Now let's move on to the nine edges. Segment RS, segment ST, segment TU, segment UR, segment UV, segment RV, segment TW, segment SW, and segment VW. And last, there are five faces. Let's start with the bottom face, quadrilateral T, U, V, W. The back face, quadrilateral R, S, T, U. The top face, quadrilateral R, S, W, V. The triangular face, R, U, V. And the other triangular face, triangle S, T, W. Leonard Euler, a Swiss mathematician, discovered a relationship among the number of faces, vertices, and edges of any polyhedron. The result is known as Euler's formula. Euler's formula says the sum of the number of faces, F, and vertices, V, of a polyhedron is two more than the number of its edges. So we use the formula faces plus vertices equals edges plus two. You will also see it written like this. Faces minus edges plus vertices equals 2. In example 2, we will use Euler's formula. How many vertices, edges, and faces does the polyhedron have? Use your results to verify Euler's formula. There are 12 vertices, the 6 from the top hexagonal base and the 6 from the bottom hexagonal base. There are 18 edges, the 6 
sides of the top hexagon, the six sides of the bottom hexagon, and the six sides that connect the two hexagonal bases. And there are eight faces, the two hexagonal bases and the six faces that connect them. Let's start with Euler's formula, faces plus vertices equals edges plus two. Now let's substitute 12 in for vertices, 18 in for edges, and 8 in for faces. 8 plus 12 is 20, and 18 plus 2 equals 20. Since 20 equals 20, Euler's formula is correct. Pause the video and do you try number 2. For each polyhedron, use Euler's formula to find the missing number. In part A, we're looking for the number of faces when we have 30 edges and 20 vertices. Let's start with Euler's formula, faces plus vertices equals edges plus 2. Let's substitute 20 in for V and 30 in for E. F plus 20 will equal 32. Subtract 20 from both sides and F will equal 12. So the polyhedron in part A has 12 faces. For part B, we are looking for the number of edges when there are 20 faces and 12 vertices. Again, let's start with Euler's formula, F plus V equals E plus 2. We'll substitute 20 in for F and 12 in for V. 20 plus 12 is 32, so 32 equals E plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides and 30 will equal E. So the polyhedron in part B has 30 edges. In two-dimensional figures, Euler's formula reduces to faces plus vertices equals edges plus 1. In example 3, we will verify Euler's formula in two dimensions. How can you verify Euler's formula for a net of a polyhedron? Let's start by drawing the net. We will have two hexagons joined by six rectangles. Now let's count the number of faces. We have one, two hexagons and three, four, five, six, seven, eight from our six rectangles, eight faces. Now let's count our vertices. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. For our edges, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. Eight plus twenty-two is thirty, and twenty-nine plus one equals thirty. Since 30 equals 30, we have verified Euler's formula for two dimensions. Pause the video and do you try number three. For part A, how can you verify Euler's formula F plus V equals E plus 2 for the prism? We know there are six faces. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 vertices. For edges, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 6 plus 8 is 14, and 12 plus 2 is 14. Since 14 equals 14, we have verified Euler's formula for the prism. For part B, how can you verify Euler's formula faces plus vertices equals edges plus 1 for the prism's two-dimensional net? Let's start by drawing the net. We have six faces, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen vertices. And for edges, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19. 6 plus 14 is 20. 19 plus 1 is 20. 
And since 20 equals 20, we have verified Euler's formula for a two-dimensional net. A cross-section is the intersection of a solid and a plane. We can think of a cross-section as a very thin slice of the solid. Notice this cross-section has the shape of a triangle. This cross-section is the shape of a square. An orange slice is a cross-section from the sphere of an orange. In a cylinder, a horizontal cross-section will be a circle, and a vertical cross-section will be a rectangle. In example 4, we will describe a cross-section. What is the cross-section formed by the plane and the solid? Notice that the plane intersects the cylinder here. If we rotate the plane and the cylinder, it is much easier to see that the cross-section is a rectangle. Pause the video and do you try number 4. For this solid, what is the cross-section formed by each of the following planes? For part A, we want a horizontal plane. A horizontal plane will slice through the solid this way, giving us a circle. For part B, a vertical plane, a vertical plane will slice through this way, giving us a trapezoid. When drawing a cross-section, remember that the intersection of two planes is exactly one line. In example 5, we will draw a cross-section. Draw a cross-section formed by a vertical plane intersecting the front and right faces of the cube. What shape is the cross-section? Since the intersecting plane is vertical, it's going to go up and down. Since we want it to intersect the front plane and the right plane, it's going to look kind of like this. The cross-section will be a rectangle. Pause the video and do you try number five. Draw a cross section formed by a horizontal plane intersecting the left and right faces of the cube. What shape is the cross section? Remember, a horizontal plane will go from side to side, and we want to intersect the left face and the right face, so it will look something like this. The cross section will be a square. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. Go ahead and take a shot at the challenge. I know you can do it. Take another minute to reread the learning goal and scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale than where you were when we began the lesson?